Welcome to Highbury Congregational Church, especially to all the, those who are visiting with us today. It is Sunday, the 24th of May. We are seven Sundays into Easter. We are in that period of time between Ascension Day and the day of Pentecost. We are awaiting people. Come, let us worship. We gather for worship with a sense of thanksgiving for all those who have participated in today's service and those who have supported the technology to make this online act of worship possible. If you would like to participate and have not done so, please contact the church office or you can contact me directly. We would be delighted to support you in getting involved. All the information is on the Connect at Highbury sheet, which has been emailed to all members and adherents. Also, I hope that you have received uh, the paperwork for our church meeting on the 4th of June. Uh, we will be meeting at half seven via Zoom. All the information is there and we want to support all church members and adherents to be able to attend this meeting. So please begin praying for that at gathering together. Also for our all age worship, you're going to need to have card, scissors, coloring pens, string, and if possible, the inner of a loo roll. I wonder what Andrea's got in store for us this week. We also want to wish her the very best as she has a few days of downtime after this service. And so we gather on this Sunday of when we're in the in-between times. It's a time of waiting. Jesus withdrew his physical presence from his disciples. They had a choice to make. Would they wait in Jerusalem as Jesus had instructed them to do? Or would they return to their normal lives? Matthew to his tax booth those who were fishermen to their nets. They had a choice to make. Would they wait and pray and anticipate the promise of the Father coming to them? How would they know what that promise looked like? How would they know when the Holy Spirit had come? So many question marks. And what if God let them down? We are in an in-between time, a waiting time. As we think of all those who are gathering around the nation and the world in this global wave of prayer, or also known as Thy Kingdom Come, we are all being called to the place of prayer, to a deeper relationship with God our Father through Jesus Christ. We gather in prayer to seek the Spirit, that the Spirit would come and empower us for the days that lie ahead. Will we wait and pray and dream of a new creation? Will we imagine a just and fair society? How will we move forward from the crisis that we are in? Or will we seek to return to our normal lives, to the place that is safe, that is well known to us. Let's come and worship Christ who invites us to wait. Let's come with that sense of anticipation of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 68. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. 
be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, rain in abundance, O oh God. You showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. So let's gather together and sing Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
Mighty God, we gather in humility to worship you. Caring God, we bring up to you our concerns. Glorious God, we exalt your holy name. Unite us, make us one in you, that your love may strengthen and empower us. Amen. Lord of all glory, we come before you, seeking your wisdom, that we may glorify you. Through our thinking, seeking your love, that we may glorify you. Through our emotions, seeking your strength, that we may glorify you at all times. Seeking your perseverance, that we may glorify you in all places. Show us how to live, that our lives shine with your glory. And those who encounter us may know you, that you are, that you are at work in your world. Amen. Amen. When our actions are not loving and we think of just ourselves, your name is not glorified. Forgive, Forgive us, us, God Lord of glory. glory. When our words bring hurt to others and we do not even notice, your name is not glorified. Forgive, Forgive us, us, God, God of, of glory. glory. When the way we live is selfish and we find no time for you, your name is not glorified. Forgive, Forgive us, God, God of glory. glory. When we do not see you or reveal your love, your name is not glorified. Forgive, Forgive us, God, God of glory. glory. Forgive us and renew us, and let your glory be seen in our lives. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together to say the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Bible and it's called Jesus Goes Home. I have done all God wanted me to do, Jesus said to his friends. Go and tell everyone about me. Make me lots more friends. Tell them everything that I have told you, how God wants to rescue them and make them safe. Wait here until God sends his special helper, then go and tell the whole world about me. It was nearly time for Jesus to go home to God, his father. Will you soon be king? asked his friends. When will you come back? God will decide, Jesus said. They were all together on the mountain of olives near to Jerusalem. A cloud came over the mountain as they talked. Where was Jesus? They couldn't see him anymore. But two men were there, 
two angels in shining clothes. Why are you looking up at the cloud? They said. Jesus has gone back to God, his father. He will come back one day, but not now. Jesus' friends were puzzled. But he told us, I will always be with you, even until the end of the world. And now he's gone away? So what did he mean? We shall just have to wait and see. Right, our craft today is focusing on two things. Um, so I've got this one here, which is a cloud and there's a tag there. Now that could be a drawing of um, Jesus and I've just done a heart there as well. Okay, now it threads up through, there's two clouds and they're stuck together with a string between the two. So you pull one, Jesus goes up into the clouds but he leaves us with his love. Okay, so that's just a simple craft like that. All right, now if you don't want to thread it through, um, do a double sided cloud, you could stick it to a toilet roll and use that tube to feed it through. Okay, so that's a bit easier. Um, and the other one, so part of the story, part of the craft is about remembering the story that Jesus went back up to heaven into the clouds. So that's that craft. But this one is um, a fairly easy one. It's just a cone of paper and I've written on there, I am listening to God. So it's just an ear horn, like that, listening to God. Okay, because that's the focus of the story. We, we are left to wait um, and to listen. Okay, so which one do you want to do first, Maggie? I'll do this one. Okay, so Megan wants to do this one. Right, so you need to draw a cloud outline yeah now if you fold a piece of paper in half and then you can cut two again so can you draw a nice big fluffy cloud like yeah a bit like that one a bit like that what one should I... okay. Fantastic. That's a really bad cloud. Okay. Now, I'm just going to cut a little bit there so Megan can write, so you can write Jesus or draw a picture. You can do it in that if you like. I'm going to do that. And then I'm gonna do okay. Now I'm just going to cut this out while Megan's writing Jesus on her piece of paper. these two clouds out and the other thing you need to make then is a heart in the same way so you cut a heart out like we did last week do two to stick together because then you can thread the well done okay so we've got the two clouds there now then what we need to do is get some glue and I'm just going to get some string, use that string, put some glue on all of, uh, actually just leave that middle section free so that yeah. the, yeah, so that the um, string can move freely through. So just glue on either side. Okay. It was two stuck together. It's two stuck together. So, hopefully, there's no glue up that section, up that middle section. And we've just glued the uh, string 
onto it. Okay, so it moves like that. Okay, so you can do the same. Okay, just need to do slightly smaller tag. Okay, like that. And hopefully that will go up through the section that the string is sitting in. So I've just made that bit. Hopefully it'll go through. Okay. So you need to do the same. Put some glue on one side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And glue the string onto that one as well, and you don't need to leave any any bits free. That'll do. That's enough. Okay. Can we stick that on the top? Okay, so we've got the string going through there. And hopefully. Oh. We need to leave some more frame. Will it go in? Fiddle fingers. <laughs> Fiddle fingers, there we go. Just make sure there's enough room in the cloud for that. It's going right go. for it to go into the clouds because he disappeared through into the cloud, didn't he? Okay. Okay. And on the other end of the string, oops. Yeah, it's a bit fiddly. A bit fiddly. On the other end of the string, I want you to do a heart. Okay, in the same way. So draw a nice big heart. Okay, and then we're going to attach that to the end of the string. I'm probably, for the sake of time, I'm not going to um, make that funnel now, but I'll just show you how easy it's done. Okay, so we've got a heart on the end of that string. And as Jesus goes down, oh, Jesus goes up, the heart goes down. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's quite a long string actually, maybe the string needed to be shorter. Okay, so, don't forget that funnel saying, I am listening to God. And all I've done there, it's got an A4 piece of paper, Turned it into a funnel. Oh, I can't do that actually. And stapled it. Okay, and then you can decorate that piece of paper and just remember that we are listening to God. Okay, we'll do that in a minute then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
after dawn at lunchtime While I'm eating at my lunch He likes to pop little words in Between each chew and a munch I have a prayer with some actions. It's taken from the roots material and it's called When Life is Difficult. There are three actions. There is believe in me and you put your hand on your heart, just one hand. Believe in you, pointing up to the sky. And you believe in me and you give yourself a hug. Okay. Dear God, when life is difficult, I believe in me because I believe in you and you believe in me. When I am faced with a challenge, I believe in me because I believe in you and you believe in me. When I struggle to do the right thing, I believe in me because I believe in you and you believe in me. When I feel down, I believe in me because I believe in you and you believe in me. Amen. Acts chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. 
Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Spirit of the living God, come. Give us ears to hear. Give us understanding hearts and obedient wills. We pray in your name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Life was put on hold. We knew it was coming, but when it actually came, we were stunned. I recall it was the 16th of March. I had gone to see my spiritual director in Oxford. I made the journey home, parked the car in the driveway and sat listening to the radio. The prime minister's voice over the airwaves sounded a grave message. By the end of the week, the advice from the government was that Churches should not meet for worship. And so we put together our first online worship service on the 22nd of March. Then the dash up to Dundee to pick up my second daughter and upon arrival home, again listening to the Prime Minister, the lockdown began. Life was put on hold. We could hear the birds singing. The skies were still. Spring pushed on, blossoms everywhere. Naked trees clothed green. The world springing to life while we felt dead. And those who stayed at home could stay at home, worked from home. And those who were part of the essential services went out to work. But there was risk everywhere for them. And we clapped for our carers and for our NHS on a Thursday and continue to do so. Life was put on hold. There were those who could work from home, those who were furloughed, those who were made redundant. Some searching for work, others finding isolation almost too much to bear. And then there were those who experienced this as a kind of rest. And there have been times when we have felt hopeful that the world might change for the better. And then the fear that perhaps as we move through this time with COVID-19, the world may actually become unbearable for others. Life was put on hold. Life is on hold and even as restrictions are loosened, we know that we cannot go back to the way that things were. Life was put on hold for those first disciples of Jesus. They had been with him through his ministry. They had witnessed the things that he had done, his deeds, his doings. They had heard his teaching. They had witnessed 
his trial and crucifixion. The grief, the agony, and the darkness of Friday gave way to unendurable Saturday when every moment dragged past and there was no hope. The past that they had shared with Jesus, the memories too painful to recall, no hope for the future. And then that first Sunday, the gradual coming to life as news of Jesus' resurrection spread. And then in those 40 days which followed, Jesus made many appearances. He proved himself to his disciples. He taught them. He prepared them. They went from life being on hold to great purpose, but then Jesus told them that he was going to go away, that they would have to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Life on hold again, but this time with purpose and with hope. Were they looking forward to it? I wonder. And then as they approached that moment when Jesus was going to withdraw from them, they asked, is this the time when glory will be restored to Israel? Is this the time when the glory days of Solomon will be realized in even more glorious terms? Is this the moment? They were looking to the past, holding on to illusions and delusions that the height of Israel's power and glory would be restored and perhaps even more glorious. Life is on hold and sometimes we hold on to our illusions and our delusions. even before COVID-19, was there a longing to return to the glory days of the British Empire, a sadness that the influence of Britain had been so greatly diminished? Oh, is this the moment perhaps when Britain would reestablish her sovereignty and become great again and influential? Is this the moment? Jesus, is this the moment perhaps when the church, her glory will be restored? And we remember days gone by of churches filled of vitality. We have our own memories and our own stories of of Sunday schools bursting at the seams, of congregations filling our buildings, and a longing for those glory days to be restored, those days when journalists attended our national gatherings and assemblies and they took notice even of congregationalists. And is there a little bit of hopefulness in us that thinks that perhaps the surge in people participating in online worship, that it might be translated into attendance at our churches once we gather again? Oh, Jesus, will the glory days of your church be restored? <laughs> and Jesus says, hang on. God's agenda, the Father's agenda, that's for him to know. All I know is this, is that you will receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. 
and that that power will be for the purpose of being witnesses, bearing witness to all the things that I did, all the things that I said. And that is your purpose. And the Holy Spirit will fill you and it will begin in Jerusalem. You will tell the story. And it will spill into Judea and Samaria and it will saturate the whole of the earth. The good news. No glory days, but a call to wait, to wait for the promise, to wait for the power. And then Jesus withdraws from them, hidden by a cloud moving upwards. This imagery which grasps at the edges of mystery. And he's gone. And the disciples stand looking heavenward. They're looking at the sky, clouds scudding across it. What are they to make of this? And then two men clothed in white appear and say, Hey, men of Galilee, why are you standing looking up at the sky? This Jesus who has gone away from you will come again to you in exactly the same way. And with that, the disciples make the journey from, the, from Mount Olivet, a Sabbath's journey, about a kilometer or so. They go back to Jerusalem exactly as Jesus told them to. Now, I don't know about you, but I would have been very tempted if I had been the disciples to go back to the life that was certain, to the trade that I knew, to the fishing nets, to the tax collector's booth. And yet they go back to Jerusalem And they climb the stairs to that upper room and they're gathered there in that place. And life is on hold. And they look around them and there are only 11 disciples. 11 of the chosen disciples. And they knew that there must be twelve, one for each tribe of Israel. They were one down. Judas had met a tragic end. One down. How could they carry on? Life on hold. Life on hold now seems to be missing. Missing its fullness. And yet there's also hope in life on hold. Yes, hope because there are women gathered there too. And look, Mary, Jesus' mother is there and his brothers. And if you recall in Luke chapter 8, verses 19 to 21, Jesus' mother and brothers came to fetch him and he held them at arm's length. There was tension in the family and here in this upper room, Life on hold. Jesus' mother and brothers are followers of the way. And they are waiting too. Life on hold, filled with gaps and emptiness. Life on hold, filled with signs of hope and renewal. And they wait there. And what do they do in the waiting? They are together. They are one. They are united. And they are devoted in prayer. They constantly pray. It's not just some part-time activity that they squeeze into an otherwise busy day. Sometimes even when we don't have anything to do, In these COVID-19 days, 
when time stretches on and we've lost track of the days and we struggle to remember what month it is, even then we find it difficult to make space for prayer. And these early disciples, they were passionate about prayer. They knew that their life de depended on prayer. And I wonder, for us now, in this place, the Highbury Church family passionately praying together, even though we are physically distant. Each and every one of us filled with that thirst for God, that longing to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit afresh and anew, waiting while life is on hold, waiting for what the Father has to give us. The power not to look to the past, not to hold on to our illusions and our delusions, but to have the power to embrace our mission, which is to witness to witness to Jesus' doings and his sayings, to witness to his life and death and resurrection in COVID-19 times, to witness to him as we move forward into the uncertain future, knowing that he is with us and that the Spirit is our power. A disciple asked his master, what can I do to attain God? The master replied, what can you do to make the sun rise? The disciple responded, I can't do anything to make the sun rise. But why then are you teaching me all of these methods of prayer to attain God? The master replied, I am teaching you these methods of prayer so that you are awake and can see when the sun rises. The life of prayer this waiting, this constant devotion to prayer is longing for the promise of the Father. It's keeping our eyes wide open, our hearts alert for when the sun rises, when the Spirit comes. Yes, life is on hold and it is filled with anxiety and fear, with some excitement and dreaming, with false hopes and illusions? Yes. But in prayer, we come to God and we bring ourselves and we say, Father, I want to receive your promise. Holy Spirit, come. Will you be praying? Are you praying? Are you disciplined in prayer? Keep your eyes wide open. Be alert for the sunrise.
Spirit of Jesus, we pray that you'll give us the same devotion to our Lord and Saviour as those first believers in Jerusalem, that we would wait expectantly as they did and devote ourselves together in prayer. Help us as a church and Christian congregations everywhere to seek your guidance for the new future which lies before us that more people will come to know Jesus and his transforming gospel of forgiveness and new life. Spirit of love, we pray for those closest to us in need, lockdown, ill health, jobs, uninvited upheaval and change at this time. We pray that they will know your comfort in their hearts and keep their hope alive. Spirit of transformation and power, we pray for our nation and wider world. With the virus, Brexit and wider trade uncertainties, climate, hatred and violence, and millions who have lost their livelihoods recently. We think especially of those in refugee camps who now have to deal with coronavirus and typhoons as well. And we pray for people in Hong Kong who want peace and democracy there. We pray that thy kingdom will come and thy will be done. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.
So as we continue in our waiting in faith that the Father will keep his promise, we take words of benediction from Paul's letter to the Philippians. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.